Next Sunday marks 10 years since the deadly shooting at Chardon High School. And all week we are looking back at those painful days and the strength of a community that certainly came together. Tonight we have the story of a mother and family who lived through the unimaginable and are honoring the legacy of a young man lost too soon by helping others. Um, my husband, Dominic Jenna, and then we were holding pictures of Danny. It's February and Dina Parmiter and her family are getting ready for an annual event to remember and make sure others don't forget the Danny Parmiter Scholarship Memorial Fundraiser. I think you, a lot of people would say that, wow, it doesn't seem like 10 years, but very few people are as close to this as you are. Does it seem like 10 years? No, and you know what I've said to a lot of people, I say it all the time. I know, I see the calendar going, the days, weeks, months, everything, but I have no idea how 10 years have passed, really. I, I don't, I have no idea. I still see that day. That day. I heard people running down my hallway screaming. And we moved a piano in front of the door. February 27th, 2012, at 7.30 a.m., a former Chardon High School student who was there waiting on a bus opened fire. Dina and Bob Parmitor had just finished work on the night shift. After getting word that there had been a shooting at the school and trying to reach her son, Dina got a call. It said Danny on my phone, so I thought it was him. I was like, oh, thank God. I'm like, Danny. And then he's like, this is officer or so, you know, so-and-so. And he goes, are you Danny's mom? And I'm like, yes, where's Danny? You know, I remember, I just, I do remember that, like, where's my son? Where's my son? Let me talk. And he just kept saying, what, does he have any allergies? Is he, does he have any, any surgeries? Is he, and I knew from being, I'm like, this is not good. Why are you asking me this? I'm like, I don't want to answer this. Let me talk to him. And he, he just said, you need to go. He goes, I remember he goes, listen to me, listen to me. And he like kind of yelled, he goes, you need to go to Metro Hospital right now. 16-year-old Danny Parmador was pronounced dead a few hours later. For me, this is one thing that's, every day that has passed, I look at it as I have stepped back from last seeing Danny. Like, I'm not as close. It's just the way I look at it. Like, that's how I feel. Like, it's going, time's going by and that's sad because it's that much further than I have been with him. I mean, I'm never going to forget, or, but I don't want to, you know, the touch of him, the smell, you know, those kind of things. It's just further that is gone, but I don't want it to be gone, you know? Dina says the scholarship fund is one way to keep Danny's memory alive. In the last decade, the family has raised through donations almost a quarter million dollars for students who want to study for careers in computer-related professions, a field Danny wanted to pursue. I always look for a little bit of Danny in some of these students, and, and I found it. <laughs> what was Danny like? Oh, he was, he was so good, such a good boy. He was so calm and just like even keel with the flow. Nothing bothered him. He got along with everybody. I mean, every day I'm, you know, just because he's not here, I'm not gonna, like some people, you know, they think, oh, their kid needs new shoes or this, or, like, just because he's not here, that doesn't mean I'm not, I'm still, every, the last thing I think of, the first thing is, is him. We say their names, those killed that day, Danny Parmiter, Demetrius Eulin and Russell King Jr. Three were wounded. Nick Walzak, Nate Mueller, and Joy Rickers. Tomorrow night at 6, we'll take another look at the Danny Parmer Memorial Scholarship Fund and meet some recipients who say they are living Danny's dream. For more on the fund and this year's event, you can go to WKYC.com.